to, to integrate into, into this development. And the Bay Area uh, is, a, uh, is not new. Uh, as we know, we have other Bay Area like New York, Tokyo, San Francisco. And in China, even we have other Bay Area, we talk about Yangtze, uh, Wilia, Delta, which is uh, Shanghai area. And then we have also Bohai. Uh, uh, area which is uh, Tianjin, Beijing, that area is north, 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 east part. So, so in Macau, we are yeah, in, 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 in the center of, uh, of the Pearl River Delta. Delta. So, so we call it, you know, Greater Bay. So, uh, so, so that's why I will uh, give uh, my presentation basically focus on the, the you know, know the, the initiative of the Greater Bay, what is Greater Bay, and then what, uh, of course, I'm from BNU, I will do some advertisements, and what BNU is just working at it. Thanks, Andrew, for this opportunity to me. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I will uh, 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 make the presentation in five parts. First of all, uh, I will talk about the characteristics, and then the second is uh, what the Macau can play within this uh, uh, Greater Bay area, and then what will be the financial integration of Greater Bay because of uh, the, uh, the mix of uh, GDP is mainly uh, by gaming. And then the, uh, the, the government has, over the decades, has been trying effort to, to diversify our, our economy into different, different sectors. And, uh, and then, during this pandemic, the government found out that the financial sector is one of the areas that can be diversified. And actually, over the past uh, decades, I would say, uh, uh, Banking or insurance uh, sector has performed very well. Uh, with very stable growth. Uh, luckily, I, will, I, I am in the financial sector. Over the past uh, two, three decades, I've been serving the financial sector in Macau. Even in SAS uh, and, and also the financial crisis, Macau banking sector did not suffer much. Actually, we keep on uh, very stable, stable growth. Uh, based on the, uh, the latest figures, uh, the, the financial sector uh, has uh, around 70%, 7 percent, seven percent of, of our GDP in the Macau. And then the government is trying to target the, to, to increase the banking or the insurance sector uh, uh, contribution to GDP to more than 10 percent. And how they how they will do it? And I'll show you later. And, and then, then the, uh, the fourth point, point I would like, like to see uh, and then discuss with you is uh, the BN promoting our cross-border business. Uh, use our Macau uh, uh, base and, and then we have, have our, our, our branch in Hanshin and, 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 and we have our rep office in China. China. And, and then the last point is, uh, of, of course, course there will be uh, challenges and, and of, of course, course there will be uh, an opportunity. Uh, in, Ch in, Ch in Chinese, we always say, yao, 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 gay. This is really, there is a danger, danger there will be always opportunity. <laughs> and, and now I, I, I go to uh, uh, the, 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 the some characteristic and indicator of uh, what is this great debate. So, so uh, well, the great debate is actually, uh, there are nine cities in China, mainly in Guangdong. It's actually, we are talking actually Guangdong Province. You know, Guangdong, within Guangdong Province, the, 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 the central government has identified nine cities. And then, together with Hong Kong and Macau, that means nine plus two, you can call it the 11. And the, the idea of Greater Bay is trying to, uh, uh, to integrate these cities uh, based on their strengths, based on their uh, the uh, competitive advantage uh, as a mix in order to, uh, to uh, have better development in our uh, modern uh, advanced manufacturing and uh, technology innovations and, uh, and, uh, and to some leisure. So uh, you can see that, you know, the great debate area, we have around 56 kilometers. 
and then the, the population is 72 million. Then the GDP is 1.5 trillion US, which is equivalent to Australia. It's uh, the same size of Australia to GDP. Uh, but you can see it's only, you know, it's only talking about population of 5% of China, which is very small. And then the, 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 the GDP contribution is 12% of China. You know? So it, it, it shows you this is the sole power of this area compared to the entire China. So going to the details of uh, the mix of that, you can see that Macau is very small, you know, just 33. It's very small, and, and the population is also small, small and the GDP is small. You know. uh, but, but luckily, Macau is identified uh, as the four core cities in the Great Bay. You know. Macau, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Guangdong. Uh, Guangzhou. So uh, it played a major role in, in this uh, initiative. Uh, Hong Kong is an international center, so, so I will show you the next night about the different the four core cities, why, why they are so important uh, uh, to this great debate in So for this characteristic, you can see further that uh, there are 43 unicorn companies in GDP, in great debate. And then the Shenzhen, 25 of them are based in Shenzhen. And then of course, very uh, familiar name like uh, Pingai, Huawei, Tencent. Uh, I, I, I was able to, uh, to visit Tencent and Huawei you know, over the past two years. It's very amazing, very big, uh, big office and R&D. Uh, and then also the, uh, even though the, uh, the Macau is the, is the smallest city, uh, in, in, term, in terms of our size, but uh, we have the biggest uh, GDP per capita, per, 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 uh, capita because of our population small. And but I think we need to review it again because uh, we have a drop of our GDP by 63.8 this uh, in Q3. But we have a lot of opportunity going forward. Then. Uh, looking into these four major uh, core cities, uh, and uh, Macau is, uh, is uh, one of the uh, major cities uh, with the assignments to, uh, with, uh, for you know, one center, one platform, and one base. You know, so we're always talking about you know, Macau uh, should be the center for uh, international tourism. And also, uh, since due to our, uh, our history, we have a very close uh, relationship with the Portuguese-speaking country, so we need to, uh, to uh, play a role for uh, the development of the trade and uh, services with the Portuguese-speaking country. And then uh, BNU has to be in it, because BNU is the only one bank in, uh, uh, I would say, in, uh, in the world that we have uh, this connection with the Portuguese-speaking country. Then the third one is uh, the space of multi-culture uh, society. Of course, uh, we Chinese culture is the main theme, but of course, uh, the other other multi uh, other culture should be should be uh, uh, should be involved. And in Hong Kong, everybody understands it's an international financial center, a logistics center, and such is uh, now you know, not an industrialized uh, city, it become uh, very innovative, it's uh, very service-oriented, uh, technology hub uh, of China or even uh, of the world. Uh, and then Guangzhou, Guangzhou, Guangzhou is uh, the, the, the capital city of Guangzhou area, so, uh, so uh, I think it's, uh, it's also a major role as a logistics center. So Macau is the largest city in the world. Out of these 180 economies, uh, Macau ranks 35 uh, in terms of economic freedom. And uh, actually, Hong, uh, Singapore ranked first, Hong Kong ranked second, and Australia ranked fourth. 
and they uh, Macau, yeah, well, it's okay, still rank around nine uh, among the 42 uh, economy in Asia Pacific. So, so my capital financial sector, sector also is my sector, sector banking. It's, it's going very, really, very really stable. Uh, the, the total, total assets has, has been increased from 140 uh, billion to uh, 2 billion. I would say 2.2 billion this year. The 2 billion is last year. Actually, this can continue to grow. You can you cannot imagine. Over the past, uh, since since the pandemic started in, uh, in January, February. Uh, the, the, the loan, both loan and deposit growth, very stable in the Macau. And, uh, and, and you don't see much uh, uh, that situation. And, and that's why I would say that our, the, the total asset of uh, the banking sector uh, is 2.2 trillion of the targets uh, nowadays. And Macau also has other advantage. I, uh, I well, everybody uh, knows that you know the uh, the uh, we can line up you know as a as a, uh, a connection for participating country and uh, and China. And we are a free trade port, even though we don't have much to export. Before we have a lot. Before Macau is a, uh, a, a manufacturing base, government textile, due to uh, the WTO, you know, no quota systems, basically no, no manufacturing sector in Macau. Uh, the only manufacturing in Macau is the food and uh, the uh, uh, industry. And uh, we don't have a foreign exchange control uh, like Hong Kong. Uh, we are a, uh, a market economy, free market economy, and then our, our customs is uh, efficient. Uh, our tax, our tax is the, the, the maximum corporate tax is 12%. Uh, so relatively, I would say in, uh, in Asia, uh, it's relatively, relatively low. So another, another role of Macau in, 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 in this greater Bay initiative is uh, you know, the government is trying to uh, develop uh, the, uh, the financial sector to promote the integration of the Bay. One of the initiatives is the, uh, the ASCM, the Monitor Authority of Macau, is, uh, is trying to take two years to set up a central uh, securities uh, depository. Uh, and also uh, to, uh, to develop the uh, security market uh, to denominate the RMPB. And, the, uh, and also they want to promote uh, to the maintenance enterprises uh, about issuing bonds uh, in Macau, particularly uh, bonds in the denominated RMPB, because they want to develop uh, Macau as a uh, uh, center for for RMB uh, trade. And uh, the RMB trade center is also, uh, for the policy speaking country, is also uh, one of the initiatives the, the Macau want to do. Uh, well, I, two years ago, I, I, I went to uh, 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 Africa, uh, basically three countries, uh, together with Malaysia and then uh, the Monetary Authority of Macau to promote Macau as the uh, random security center for the Portuguese uh, speaking country. So we pay this to Angola, we pay this to Mozambique and Cabo uh, Verde. So uh, we talked to the central government uh, and also the central bank about, about what we can do here. Uh, also, the financial leasing is one of the uh, uh, initiatives that the uh, can want to develop. Why financial leasing? Because uh, the, the, the leasing industry in China is, is, is very developed very fast. Because uh, uh, the, the, the economy don't need to borrow a lot. They can make use of the leasing, financial leasing to start or to invest in their, in their production. So, and then also China has a lot of uh, you know, excess capacity. They want to export this uh, excess capacity to, to the overseas, particularly those uh, Portuguese-speaking countries. And then they want to, they want to put this business in account. 
to, uh, to help Macau by visit. So, uh, for financial integration, so uh, one of the areas why, why financial integration is, is, is to, uh, to, 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 to help China to promote the use of renminbi. To help, uh, to help uh, the, um, the internalization of renminbi. So uh, you can see that you know uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, you know uh, mobile payment, cashless uh, initiative. Uh, actually, last month uh, China already started the digital currency, uh, and then they call it uh, DCEP, digital currency e-payment. And then the uh, what I know is uh, they uh, the law uh, government uh, put up 10 million. Just a kind of lucky job. People can can get maximum 200 of package. Uh, no, no, but 200 RMB. So uh, people randomly get 200 RMB digital currency, and then they can spend in, in the stores, you know. And then it works very well. Along. And now it's actually it's a pilot, pilot city like Shenzhen, Beijing, uh, Suzhou, and uh, I've got another city in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the West. So they're doing it now. It's, it's very easy. easy. I, I, I look. I, I had experience to, uh, to share with those uh, people in, in China. And then the, actually, they, the, the bank they have two accounts. They can convert one to one the uh, the, the remedy into the digital account, and then they can use they can use the mobile phone to uh, to, to make payment with this currency. So it's each it is backed by the government. This is not that you know like uh, like now you have a wallet. The wallet is. We belong to a private company, but that, the digital currency is backed by government. So you don't, you don't worry about the, the collapse or bankruptcy of that company. But, uh, uh, but the, of course, uh, I always make a joke. You know, ah, we got other companies, when they promote the wallet, they will give you some power red pocket, you know, some promotion, but for this, no, they don't have. But they, uh, but they don't charge to the merchant and anything. So, so the merchant can, can, can use this facility without paying any fee. And then they also, they don't need to work under Wi-Fi. Because the system, they, 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 they put it into, into your chip. Then you they don't, you don't need to have a Wi-Fi connection to, 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 to make the payment. So they are working very well. And they can track each single remedy where they go. So, so it's uh, a lot of implication to Macau, because a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, movement of uh, money flow between China and, 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 and Macau is still on the ground. I don't know in the future what happened. So, uh, well, uh, our friend uh, Joe and Kate, hey, you know, they, they have a uh, very, you know, they work very well. Uh, actually, the, uh, I would say that the, the pandemic uh, is like a catalyst for uh, to to, to uh, speed up our process in the mobile payment. So, so a lot of people subscribe to MPA, you know, over the past few months. People use MPA now. I don't, I, I, I don't keep cash. If I go to the, you know, uh, coffee shop, I just need to pay my MPA, you know, without receiving the coins, notes. Some dogs are a bit dirty and won't keep, but then they, you know, very easy. And then now they can expect, extend Hong Kong with, uh, with, 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 with uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Hong Kong provider. Uh, the, uh, they can, in the future, maybe next, next year, they can, uh, I don't know, maybe we can use the uh, NHA to make payment in Hong Kong. Uh, restaurants, uh, shops, uh, and then the, uh, this is uh, also the, the future development that, uh, well, the digital currency may be, the one day it will happen in Macau. Now, we talk about another integration about the bond market. The, uh, what I mentioned earlier is uh, now because uh, the government initially talk about the future finance. You know, people always ask about what is future finance. And uh, I, I, uh, I, what I know what future finance 
uh, this uh, uh, financial leasing, uh, wealth management, and, but, but it's nothing new. But, but, but the, the, the government is saying future fund. And a lot of people asking what is future fund. Mm -hmm. But, but now, is, and then the government also study, study uh, to have our, our, our security, you know, uh, exchange center in Macau. So, so uh, now, now it's more clear that the government want to develop bond market. And the uh, two years ago they approved a license to MOX, the Zhonghua uh, Securities Trading Company. Which is backed by uh, the Nam Hong Group, you know, which belong to the state, uh, state council. So they facilitate the uh, issuing uh, of bond, custodian of bond, uh, and registration of bond. You know. But now uh, the government wants to develop the bond market and with, uh, uh, with better infrastructure in terms of hardware and, uh, and software. And, and then on the, in the October, actually, the Monetary Authority of Macau has signed up a, a cooperation agreement with China Security Regulatory Commission in order to, to have Macau to develop this uh, bond center. And then the, uh, and also the uh, disability study is also carried out to establish, uh, you know, to set up a uh, uh, random bid in order to security exchange in Macau. So, so another issue uh, well, we, we are working on is uh, the, the, the green bond. Uh, you know, uh, now this China uh, is also you know taking the responsibility to uh, to develop uh, you know the green finance and how is uh, should follow through. Uh, for the role of uh, the green bond, Macau does not have a standard for green finance. Hong Kong did. Hong Kong has. Uh, that's why uh, the, in August, the Association of Banks of Macau, uh, the Monitor of Macau, and the, uh, the Environmental Protection Bureau, uh, it's, it's a soft bond, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Bureau. Three of them have signed an agreement to promote uh, the, the, the green uh, finance. We can use uh, whatever the international standard with, certi with uh, certification, then we can issue green bond or green finance. And then, the, of course, in the last year, uh, BVOC had uh, issued the first uh, green bond. Uh, successfully. Then the, the another area is the green uh, is the wealth management. The uh, the uh, wealth management is a kind of uh, initiative that we can facilitate the the RMB, you know uh, trade between the China and and, and Macau. So actually, the uh, PPOC China. And, uh, and the Macau Monitor Authority of Macau, and then the Hong Kong MA had actually signed a joint uh, declaration to, uh, to have the wealth management connect, which means that uh, the, it can facilitate uh, Macau people uh, buy the investment product of China or Macau. But currently, the Macau people can, can only, only go to Zhuhai or China, China to supply those investment products. In but, but in the future, maybe by the end of this year, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the approval is, uh, is obtained, and the, or the infrastructure can be arranged later next year. Macau people can buy investment products of China or Macau. The vice versa. Chinese people, mainly in China, can, can buy the investment product from, from Macau, Macau banks, and, and also the same apply to Hong Kong. So, so this, uh, this is still uh, in, in the, uh, the uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, in the discussion stage. It's, it's almost, almost finalized. finalized. Hopefully, yeah. the announcement will be, uh, will be made in the uh, end, end of the year. year. So the, the last, last uh, slide, initiative regarding the. Integration is a financial leasing. So uh, this is one of the one of the, 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 the government role initiative. Uh, the, 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 the 
Chinese, Chinese government want to uh, export their excess capacity to, uh, to the, the, the countries in the Belt and Road, particularly from Macau to, to the Portuguese speaking countries. Uh, wow. No, BNU, you know, advertisements at the time. Uh, BNU, BNU is, is offering these services. Uh, since, since last year, year I but, uh, it's not easy to, to push, push forward this leasing business. business. Uh, uh, due to various tax, tax interest, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of issues more you know, to push, push forward for this business. And they, uh, for what we did is uh, we had a uh, uh, very good connection, connection with the Portuguese speaking country to our group, uh, uh, our current group, uh, the CCGD, Kaiser uh, they have, uh, they have, uh, well, the group has uh, uh, business, business. And, and, and uh, our, uh, our units in seven Portuguese speaking countries. And uh, that's, that's why BN can rely on this uh, network to, to contribute for uh, the making uh, the platform of Macau uh, to, to serve this uh, initiative. And, and uh, in China, China, we have a rep office you know, almost 40 years, years ago. And uh, uh, in China, China, we have a lot of rebel monsters there. And, and then since uh, uh, the 2016, uh, 2016, end of 2016, we saw open our engine branch. Since uh, January 17, we officially opened our engine branch. Our engine branch is a full branch. It's the, the first international bank, the first Macau bank to open branch in Beijing. And, and then it's also the first uh, foreign bank can, can, can trade Remini B, can, can land Remini B in uh, the first, first day of, of, of operation in Hanqing. So we are serving the, uh, our Macau people, our Macau company for the development of, 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 of their business or their personal investment in, in China. Vice versa, we can help the Chinese company to, uh, to promote the business or the development the business in a speaking country. And uh, well, our branch, you know, uh, we have a unique position. We have uh, BCB in Macau since 1902. Uh, this year we are, you know, celebrating our 118 years. Uh, and also we are the Norwegian Bank, bank. Uh, we just, just granted uh, by, by the government for another 10 years and no printing rights, starting from October. And then, and then the, uh, we also have, uh, 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 we can, can have, uh, you know, provide our service to our energy network. Uh, to, 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 the, uh, to, the, to our people, to our, to our customers, customers uh, of Macau, into Hanshi, and, and even further to Zhuhai and other cities in the Greater Bay. And, and actually, in, in, in Hanshi, we have some statistics, statistics showing that the majority of, uh, of the companies that set up in Hanshi uh, are from, from Macau. Uh, they set up companies in, in Hanqing for various uh, reasons, but the, 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 the number is quite big. Uh, and, and, and this is a story, uh, uh, it's a stepping stone for uh, actually for uh, a Chinese company to develop their business in Europe, or the vice versa for our Portuguese uh, speaking countries uh, company to do as a stepping stone to enter into the Great Bay and then to the Great China as well. So, so this is uh, the network of our Portuguese speaking country, so we have, uh, we have seven uh, uh, presence in the, uh, in related to the Portuguese speaking country. Uh, then, well, of course, for the Portuguese speaking country, we have 280 people, you know, and uh, this is the statistics, uh, basically because of Brazil. Because the population is concentrated in Brazil. The majority of the trade is also happening in Brazil. And uh, for uh, playing this uh, 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 role in the platform, BNU is not working alone. We signed a uh, protocol with uh, Bank of China Macau as a strategic uh, development to, to, to 
the menus of uh, the, 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 the advantage of each uh, bank, bank to the involve our business. business. And, and then, then we, we also, also signed the uh, protocol with our parent company, CCG Group. And, uh, and uh, we also sold ICCC, the biggest bank, bank in China, in China uh, uh, Beijing. And, and we also, also have, have a protocol, protocol with APIN. APIN. Uh, and also, also Sancho, 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 we signed uh, the, the agreement in, in uh, July, July, effective in August, August, which is the, 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 the uh, it's called, called China, China uh, uh, Export, Export and Credit, Credit Insurance Company, which is the biggest uh, insurance company to provide the, uh, the Export Insurance uh, Services in China. China. They, they don't have offices in Macau, Macau so, so they, they signed agreements in, in, in China, China with our engine branch. branch. So, so uh, for for exports uh, to, to uh, high risk countries, so we call it high risk countries, like Angola or something, big, big, that, that they can provide insurance so, so that the exporters can, 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 can you know, be, be protected, protected by, by these insurance. insurance. Then, then, of, of course, course finally come, come to the end, end of that, that is, uh, well, well, we, we have opportunity and challenge. Uh, well, well uh, the opportunity is, uh, is a big market, as, as uh, I, I show you the market size, population. The development of greater bay, bay, then you can, can develop further, further into the, 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 the uh, uh, further inland of China. China. Of course, uh, uh, a, a lot, lot of it's not easy. easy uh, as, as what, what I talk, talk. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know. Because of Hong Kong, Macau, and China has a different three different legal framework, and then we have also three different taxation system, and then the currency also. So it's not easy to to get, to get it, you know, as a as a uh, in a in a very smooth way. And then the the second point is uh, still have a lot of limitation limitations uh, regarding the mobility of goods, people. Uh, uh, technology and information. So as uh, so we can see that nowadays it's not easy for a passport holder to cross the border to Zhuhai. Only like us, we have uh, with Hang Jing, then uh, we can go to, to, to the Greater Bay. So this uh, limitation, you know, why why we have this limitation? If, if we are talking about Greater Bay, you know, why why should we have this lim limitation? And then the uh, the third one is the, it's still in the early stage. This initiative uh, this guidelines was issued in last year, and it's still the, among the cities, among between even Hong Kong, Macau, we still have a lot of things to, dis, dis, to discuss in order to create a synergy. And then the last one is, uh, of course, the uh, the is a foreign exchange control. And the renminbi is still a, uh, is a, is not an international currency, so it's still under very strict uh, control. So this is uh, my presentation. So it gives you a lot of uh, thinking, uh, a lot of things we need to solve. Uh, it's not easy solution for that. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you, you may have. Uh, thank you, Sam. Super interesting presentation. Uh, lots of, I've got a four or five questions myself, but uh, I think you should open it up to everybody else first and uh, we can hit mine if we run out. Questions, anyone? Here we go, Jill. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Sam, thank you for a really excellent presentation. I think actually the best on GBA that I've heard. Um, uh, 
We know that you are indeed in Hunching, but does the bank plan on going into the other nine cities? Okay. All right. Uh, that's number one question. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Number two. Okay. Uh, is uh, real estate. Um, do you have any views on property and also labor leaving here and going working within GBA? So, uh, answering your first, first questions, uh, well, it's uh, not easy uh, to develop business in China, which is too big, because all big China is really too big. Uh, for the size of us, uh, we are not able to compete with the four major banks or in, in, in China. That's why we need to be very uh, strategically think how we can extend our services. So for BNU, uh, I cannot say for other bank, but for BNU, our, may, our core business is in Macau. We have been developing our business BNU in Macau. So we serve our community in Macau. Uh, we serve around, we have 200, we have around 250,000 CIF individual customers in BNU. The active one may be around 200. So we are serving, you know, around 45,000 payroll customers. So, and we have a lot of SMEs uh, with BNU. So our initial idea to develop Hengqing branch is to serve our customer in Macau. Because they have a need to, to buy properties, to invest in the nearby city like Zhuhai, Zhongshan area, and, uh, and also some SME want to develop their business in, in, in Zhuhai. You know? That's why we open a Hengqing branch. But if you go further to other cities like Dongguan, like uh, Huaizhou, for Huaizhou, I take four hours uh, car, not, not train. Four hours. For Dongguan, two hours. Although we are talking about oh, one hour, one hour uh, traffic, you know, by by train, you know, if by car, you know, not easy. That's why um, people talk about that Macau should serve the western part of the delta, you know, not the east part. So we should serve our our western part. So that's why uh, we are not so aggressive to develop our network in all cities. So we should first look at our portfolio to serve our customers best. Uh, of course, let's see what happens in the future. If our customer like you, if you want to, if many of you want to develop further into Dongguan, to Huaizhou, Shenzhen, we will go through. It is one of our agenda to think what will be the next step for our China uh, uh, strategy. We, have, we start in Hengqing. So we are, for the, the second one, I think more more people, I think he, a lot of opportunity for Macau people to diversify their own career, I would say. Macau is too narrow. Our, uh, sorry to say that, Professor, because we have so many universities, we have a lot of students, graduates, but when they graduate, then they can't find a very, you know, ideal job. Either go to government, banks, casinos, hotels, what else? No. So I'm sorry to say that, you know, Macau, we don't have international companies. Uh, oh, no, we have, but not many. And wow, but Greater Bay is different. In Shenzhen, we have 1,500 listed company. We have, you know, top 100 fortune companies in Shenzhen, in Guangzhou. Why, why not our young people to develop their career in China? And of course, buying property is their, their own choice. Okay, so I think, of course, buying property in China is, uh, is one of the good investment. The guy I don't see is for, it keep very stable growth, particularly in Shenzhen. In Shenzhen, I pay visit to Shenzhen two weeks ago. They said that the highest price is uh, approaching 200,000 per square meter. At average, around 150. 150,000 RMB per square meters. 
And uh, the one in uh, in uh, in Hanqing is uh, Sundak property. It was sold at around average fifty thousand, fifty thousand uh, uh, RMB per, per per square meter. The 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 property next to the new custom. Just for your reference. More this kid. Thank you, Sam, for a very wide-ranging and diverse presentation. I enjoyed it. Uh, your competitor, HSBC, may be the, um, the world's local bank, mm. but I think BNU is the bank of people's hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, my question is three-pronged, really. Where do you see, as a banker, the financial hub, the logical financial hub. Okay, second thing is, is the bank strategizing for the enormity of this 15 block nation, a trade block, uh, including Australia mm. and New Zealand and Japan? Mm. And thirdly, aren't the connections with Portuguese countries, mm. the Lusophone countries, largely strategic rather than financial? Mm. Well, the, uh, I, I never look at Hong Kong Bank as our competitor. Actually, they are too big. And uh, we, are, we are a small bank. Uh, well, uh, in Macau, you know, they have very big uh, giant. We have our uh, competitive edge. So uh, we, we are in Macau for 118 years. And uh, we, small is beautiful. So uh, we can turn around easily. And then the uh, well, people provide more or less the same services. Of course, uh, you know, they look at our our customers need. We, we deliver the, the product to them. So uh, for the financial hub, I would say that Macau is still a long way to go because uh, because if you want to develop the bond market, it's not only the bank to involve. We need invest. We need international investors. We need rating agency. We need uh, professional accountants. We need a lot of uh, other other sectors to be an integrated uh, ecosystem to develop this uh, the, the the financial hub. It's, Hong Kong cannot be replaced overnight. It's difficult. Macau is not going to compete with Hong Kong. We are, I think the government is not ask Macau to compete with Hong Kong. We just provide something they don't have, or they, they don't, it's too small for them. Okay, let us do it. So something like that. So uh, for, for Macau, Chi the, the central government want Macau to play a role in help China to, to develop our RMB to be internationalized. And also the bond market is one of the area that we can help. So we can help those uh, enterprises in China uh, to raise funds in RMB and to develop their uh, business activity in China. And then in the long run, maybe take two years time to, 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 to set up this infrastructure by AMCM, then hopefully we will have investor, international investors to come in to buy those bonds. And then we have international rating agency from nearby Hong Kong. And we have we already big four there, accountants audit firm in Hong Kong, and also they have very good uh, teams in Macau. But we need more people, professionals, so that our graduates in, in, in the business school will have more opportunity to, to develop further. And then the, uh, for the Portuguese-speaking country, I, I agree that it's not easy because uh, uh, I would say uh, the only feasible way, of course, I, I will advise customers to, uh, to invest in Portugal because Portugal is part of Europe with very well developed uh, uh, legal framework and uh, in Europe, you know. So if you go to Mozambique, Angola will be quite difficult because of uh, the currency control, you know, it's uh, not, not easy, but we have the duty to promote this. And uh, it's not an easy task, Professor. So, but we are trying our effort to do it because, uh, you know, in the world, only CGD Group has uh, seven, you know, presence in those seven countries, in those seven Portuguese-speaking uh, countries. So, did I answer your questions?
Hi Sam, uh, I just have a bit of a question. On your last slides there you mentioned about the difficulties in uh, foreign exchange, particularly with the RMB. Yeah. And by opening your branch in Henshin, has yeah. that enabled you to start to peel some of those layers away or is there still going to be issues moving forward? No, no. Actually, our, our branch in uh, in Hanqing need to follow the rule of uh, PBOC, the People's Bank of China. Uh, they have a very strict control in uh, in Renminbi. Uh, but they they now uh, they had uh, started to ease away for the flow of uh, Renminbi between the two places, uh, like the wealth management uh, connect. Uh, what I know now is uh, the under this this scheme, Chinese uh, investors in China they can invest maximum one million RMB to to Macau in an enclosed system. That means after the maturity of the investment product, the money need to be returned back to China with, within the same structure, same circuit. So it's an enclosed structure. So uh, it's still very tight uh, in terms of uh, currency control. But uh, this, the, this, the, the central government is trying to promote the use of renminbi. For example, they want to say, for example, uh, well, because a lot of commodity trade between China and, uh, and uh, Brazil or Angola or, or, or Mozambique. And then they want to price this in renminbi so that the country can trade in renminbi. Of course, it, it, it's supposed the central banks should have the, uh, the set up the arrangement between the central banks. So what I know is uh, the, the central government of Beijing is trying to promote the use of renminbi, but control for renminbi uh, of the Chinese people is still on. Is uh, never, never relax. And then another way to uh, to promote the use of RMB is a digital currency. With digital currency, everything transparent. Then I think the central government will have more confidence in uh, letting to let the RMB go because they can track with the current with the current uh, you know, blockchain, you know, fintechs. You know, they can trade each, each single cent where it goes. So I think with this digital currency, uh, 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 you know, become more and more popular, I think uh, the renminbi will, will go overseas or international. That's my, that's my guess. Well, I mean, you can throw a dart at the dartboard the way we're going at the moment and you still won't get it right. Um, second part to that, I mean, Hong Kong traditionally has been a, a, a very big financial hub yeah, and yeah. a holding centre for international yeah, companies, yeah. particularly ones that trade into China. Um, a lot of them have their, their, their foreign, well, their holding company actually in Hong Kong itself um, and then subsidiaries or et cetera over across the border uh, and use their primary source of invoicing and, and uh, et cetera out of Hong Kong. Do you see Macau taking a bit more of a role now that there's been a, a change in the situation in Hong I Kong in the past? I, I, think think so. I don't think so. Because uh, over, uh, you know, the uh, Macau has an offshore company law or something like that. You know, we allow Hong Kong company to 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 uh, to open the office in Macau as kind of offshore company, and then they can they can put all your, their invoices, uh, purchasing center in Macau. But now with tax exemption, with a lot of advantages. But now the government cut to kill all this, and they don't want them. They don't want them. And then they because we have a gaming industry here, and because of this tax benefits, it gives an impression to other countries that we are a tax haven. We are trying to pro provide solution for people to avoid tax. So we don't want it. We don't want, uh, to, we don't want Macau as a reputation of uh, money laundering. So we don't want that. But we, our tax is very low already. We have tr we only, the maximum tax rate, corporate tax is only 12%. It's very low compared to other countries. We don't need, we don't need this type of uh, this type of uh, taxation arrangements business. Thank you.
that's uh, all we've got time for. Uh, I could ask a whole bunch of questions. Perhaps, perhaps I will at the bar <laughs> okay. uh, when we when we uh, when we um, abscond. I think is the word uh, to the bar. So uh, just uh, uh, first of all, please put your hands together and uh, thanks okay. for an excellent presentation. <laughs> Uh, the fact the fact that we've run out of time is a good indication that it was uh, w well received. I thought it was a very good presentation. It had just the right amount of information and uh, uh, leaving us wanting some more. Uh, two very quick things in the last minute that I've got um, is that uh, you, you've all been the beneficiaries of Auschan Macau's very generous pricing structure on the Power Hour uh, this year, and uh, there's been uh, no charge, been free of charge for both members and non-members. Um, the board's decided that we better look after our members, so there will be a small fee beginning for non-members only uh, from next year, uh, still free of charge for both members and non-members on the 16th of December, so please do come along uh, to that. Of course, if you want to become a member of Auscham Macau, if you're not already, we'd love to have you, auscham.mo, go check out the website and all our events. See, I also have to do advertising. <laughs> the, uh, please check out our upcoming events are all there, and uh, if you want to sign up, very cheap, very cheap, very good value. Uh, that's that, that's all that. And um, as I say, look, we, um, I, I'm definitely if you can if you can make the bar, I've got a couple of questions I'd love to ask you, uh, particularly about capital flight between Macau and uh, mainland China. So thanks very much, and uh, bang on 7:30. And thanks for coming, and we'll see you on December the 16th, or before that, December the 4th, for the Interchambers uh, Christmas party. Which, if you want the details, you can go to uh, Auschan Macau's website. Details are there, as they are on the four other chambers our friends that we're doing it with. So thanks very much. Good night.